Hey everybody, this is LNGK, just giving you a quick walkthrough of the, I guess, mental hellhole <laughs> that was uh, the search for the gray mask, so hope you enjoy. So at the start of the search, there's a little text intro. Most of it was just storytelling, but there's a little key phrase repeated twice, and it's something people needed to note to assist in decoding the note from their cellmate. Um, so here's the note. There's a set of coordinates followed by two numbers and then the cipher text. The coordinates are for a park in Canada called Playfair Park. This is indicating that the Playfair cipher should be used for this code. The numbers are referring to the grid for the cipher. On the decode website, the grid defaults to 5x5 five five, or 25, and the note is saying it should instead be 4x4 four four, or 16. When you set the grid to 4x4 four four and then plug in the key phrase from the intro, dogs want muck prey, you can then decipher the text, which gives you rcgraymasksywordpress.com y. Using the minus y hint on the note to remove the y letters that don't make sense, you get a website, rcgraymasks.wordpress.com. On the first website, there are basically three steps to work through. The lines of a French poem, the binary code, and the Twitter handle. The French poem lines were made particularly famous in World War II for Operation Overlord, or the Normandy invasion, as they were used by the English to signal the French resistance that the invasion was happening soon. It took place on D-Day, obviously, so June 6th, 1944, which is what the quote, what a day note is referencing. The dashes beneath are indicating you need six digits for the date, so 661944. The binary code as a whole is irrelevant and only provides a troll message when decoded as is. If you notice, there are six lines of binary and six digits for the date. This is because you have to look up the binary letter for the corresponding date digit on each line. So for lines one and two, the sixth letter, line three, the first letter, and so on. Taking these six binary letters out gives you Royov, which by itself won't make sense. But beneath the binary is very clearly a Twitter handle that uses five letters and has an underscore at the end. Searching at Royov underscore on Twitter brings you to this Twitter page, which has a link to the second website. The second website is relatively straightforward in that there are only two items to decode a block of encrypted text, and an encrypted email. The key hint here is at the top. The reference to Caesar gives you the hint that the encrypted text uses the Caesar cipher, the date of his assassination, March 15th, and that it marked a shift in the way of the world indicates that you need to use a shift of 15 for the cipher. Plugging the text and shift into decode gives you this decoded text, offering you praise for your progress and instructing you to send an email to the encoded email address at the bottom. The clue to pay attention to is that at the end where it states, like Caesar, you too are a progressive. The words progressive and Caesar are telling you to use the progressive Caesar cipher, and the word too was not a typo, but instead telling you to use a shift of two for the cipher. The decryptor and decode gives you the email address percyisrising at proton.me. Sending the email titled preeminent to the listed address gives you this email response. I won't read the text, you can pause the video if you want to read the whole thing. But in summary, it outlines that the Grey Masks have a traitor at the prison, Max Smith, and they want you to see what you can find out about what he knows. The email gives you several puzzle pieces, Max's username for the admin system, how long his password is, and that you can determine his password from the blackmail image linked at the bottom. Looking at the blackmail image, while admittedly disturbing and a little hard on the eyes, you may notice there are three distinct code clues, the calendar scratchings on the wall, the Morse code above the snake tattoo, and the Roman numerals on the snake itself. The scratchings are using a simple A1Z26 letter to number cipher, which spells out Paradise Lost. The Morse code spells out the number 1, and the Roman numerals stand for 263. So, Paradise Lost, Book 1, Line 263. 
Looking up this line, we see it reads, Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Recalling that the email said the password was 11 characters long, and with a bit of trial and error guesswork, you get a password, reign in hell. Within the admin system, located at sysadmin.penfriends.io, you must find and decode three passwords to unlock the final section of the game. Logging into the system using the Ozymandias username with the password Rain in Hell opens up availability to a number of folders and files. The first passcode can be found in the Notes folder. Within this folder are two text files, one named Favorite Poem Lines and another named I Am a Philosopher. The second file is password locked, so you need to open the Poem Lines folder first. Within this file is a list of poem lines. There's nothing particularly special about the lines themselves. The code lies in the actual poem, specifically the poem titles. When written out in order, the first letters of the poem titles spell out God is dead. With the second text file named I am a philosopher, pairing that with the God is dead phrase gives you the clues you need for the text file password. God is dead was coined by Friedrich Nietzsche, a German philosopher, so, the password is Nietzsche. Opening this text file, you will quickly notice it's mostly weird ramblings of a wannabe philosopher with a numeric code at the bottom. The first thing to note here is the title of the document, quote, The Beginnings. This indicates you should be looking at the beginning word of each paragraph, which says, use the nihilist cipher below. Additionally, the first sentence of this document says, use the alphabet. And the last line of the second paragraph says, Freedom is the key. Pairing these clues together, you can use the decode website and plug the numbers into a nihilist cipher with the alphabet as the grid and the word freedom as the key. This gets you code 1 is into, which means into is the first passcode you need for the end game. Like the first passcode, the second passcode is relatively self-contained. Within the images folder, there are two connected picture files, crossword and poker night, that must be solved to obtain code 2. The crossword image file shows a Revel City newspaper with a partially unfinished crossword puzzle. It's up to you to finish it. The crossword image doesn't actually give you anything toward the second passcode, but it does give you some helpful hints about what to look for in poker night. When solving the remainder of the crossword, you get the following words in the highlighted sections. These words correspond with the hint at the top of the page. When writing it out, you get Poker Night, 7 codes, 7 letters, equals code 2. So, this tells you that you get the second passcode from Poker Night, and the image has 7 codes, each with 7 letters. The 7 letters clue also is referencing that code 2 itself has 7 letters. In the Poker Night image, there is a lot to look at. Starting at the top of the image and working our way down, we first have Navy Signal Flags. When decoded, these flags spell out Empower. The next code is the framed quote, Hell is empty and all the devils are here. This is a line from Shakespeare's play, The Tempest, so the word here is Tempest. Next we have Poker Chips. The Poker Chips are stacked in Morse code with the white chips representing dots and the red representing dashes. This is also hinted at by the case of chips in the back labeled Morse's poker chips. The poker chips, when decoded, spell out lessons. The dice only have dots on certain sides and are a unique cipher, titled simply as a dice cipher. Each side of the die corresponds to a specific letter, spelling out non-zero. The playing cards are a simple A1Z26 cipher, with the numbers 5, 5, 9, 5, 14, 13, and 19. The numbers translate into E, E, I, E, N, M, S, which, when descrambled, gives you enemies. The napkin with the phone numbers, a small thing that provided a lot of heartache and will maybe haunt people for a while, is a simple homemade keyboard code. The bar this picture was taken in is the keyboard de bar, a play on words for keyboard bar. On this napkin note, part of the bar name is obscured by a peanut, which just leaves keyboard. Looking at the text, the note says, call me below with a number, and then I'm down with another number. 
This is indicating the letters are below the first set of numbers on the keyboard and then down however many keys indicated. What you get is the word advance. Finally, the easiest code in the picture is the single letters scattered throughout. When you put them all together and unscramble them, you get rat bags. So now you have seven words, each with seven letters. These words need to be put in the proper order though. Specifically, empower, tempest, enemies, rat bags, non-zero, advance, and lessons. Taking the first letter of all seven words and placing them together gives you eternal, which is the second of three passcodes you need for the endgame. Getting the third and final passcode is the longest and most difficult section of the whole puzzle, and rightfully so. It's the last passcode before the end game. Since the Omega folder is locked and requires two passwords to open, you need to get the passwords from the flights image. Similar to the Poker Night photo, there is a decent amount to decode here. First, a few clues. On the counter is a King James version of the Bible, which is hinting that the passwords in the image are found in that specific version of the Bible. The laptop next to it is simply cluing you into the fact that the passwords are actually phrases and not single words. The two airline posters on the walls are minor hints that, if you looked close enough, you could get, but they also weren't critical to you solving the puzzle. The poster on the left references airlines, gates, and times. On the airplane, very faintly, you can see A1Z26, hinting the A1Z26 cipher is used. On the right, flights and numbers are referenced, with ASCII 3D on the plane. Those hints might have made it a little too easy, but I chose to give the clue just in case someone chose to actually look close enough. So for the arrivals and departure boards, the key thing to look for is the flight status. The delayed and cancelled flights are irrelevant and should be ignored entirely. Only the on-time flights give you anything. For arrivals, if you look at the first letter of the from locations, it spells out Genesis. As you can probably tell, the airlines all have a number in their names. They are 3, 8, 1, 16, 20, 5, and 16. I did make an error in this one and put the Korean translation for 16 in the last flight instead of 18. So the, the decoded text comes out to chapter, but with a P at the end instead of an R. That's my bad. Guess I didn't do enough quality check on that one. For the flights, they are as straightforward as the from locations. For the flights with an actual letter and the flight number, they spell out three. The gate and time columns are using the A1Z26 code like the airlines. So the gate numbers are 22, 5, 18, 19, and 5 which decrypts to verse. The time numbers are 6, 9, 22, and 5, which decrypts to 5. So for the arrivals board, we have Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. The departures board is similar in some ways, but different in others. The two locations still use the same first letter code, which spells out Ecclesiastes. The airlines use the same coding as the arrival airlines, but the difference is there are zeros, which translate to spaces, between each letter, but it still spells out chapter. For the flights, if you look at the first letter, they spell out Pythagoras. You then need to translate the flight numbers, which are ASCII encoded, hinted at from the poster. When you decode them, you get Nobilis Digit. So it's asking you what Pythagoras called the Nobilis Digit, which is 3. The gates are the same and spell out verse again. I apologize, this was a little lazy of me, but I was honestly struggling with a clever way to present it again at this point. Finally, the time column also uses the A1Z26 cipher just as before, and spells out icosahedron, which is a 20-sided die, so the code here is 20. So, the departures board, we have Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 20. Before we figure out the passwords from these references though, it would be really helpful to check the email screenshot in the images folder. This image provides a helpful clue on what to look for regarding each password. In the email, it states Max's departure flight has 5 movies total and a length of 18 hours, and his arrival flight also has 5 movies total and a length of 15 hours. At the end, it says there is no extra space in either flight, indicating that there are no spaces between words in the phrase. 
As far as the hours and movies references, five movies means five words, and the 18 and 15 hours is referencing 18 and 15 letters, respectively. So, knowing this information, we can find the passwords in the Bible verses. The Genesis reference, again from King James Version, is shown here. Using a little guesswork and trial and error, you would find the arrival password is, quote, ye shall be as gods, again with no spaces. For Ecclesiastes, shown here, the departure word is all turned to dust again, no spaces. So these two passwords, used in order, give you access to the Omega folder. After using ye shall be as gods and all turned to dust again to access the Omega folder, you are presented with another image and several text files. To start, the question mark text file does not actually play into getting the third and final code, but it does give you the website to use the codes. The answer to the question, are you a poor fellow soldier of Christ, is irrelevant, as the clue here is the poor fellow soldiers of Christ, which is another name for the Knights Templar, a Catholic military order that existed during the Middle Ages. The Templar reference is an indicator that the Templar cipher should be used to decode the symbols. Plugging it into trusty decode, which, by the way, will be heavily used in this folder, gives you theothershore.gm. Again, this is the website URL for the end game, which we will use later. Going back now to the art gallery image, you are shown a piece of art with the title plaque, The Unseen World Around Me, underneath. This title is cluing you in that the code in the image is braille. Looking up the letters in a braille decoder gives you the phrase, Color of Original Friars Minor Habit. The Friars Minor, or Franciscans, are a religious order that often wear hooded tunics, also called a habit. The color of their original habit is gray, so the clue to take away from this is gray. This is useful in the next text file, titled I, because the very first code looks like binary, but is not, in fact, binary. It is gray code. Plugging these numbers into the gray code decoder gives you ASCII numbers. Plugging those ASCII numbers in gives you the DYNE, at least that's how I assume it's pronounced. The DYNE, or maybe the DNA, is Navajo for the people, which is what they call themselves. So the clue here is that the middle code uses a Navajo cipher. Plugging the text into the Navajo decoder gives you Abhorrent Morbid. This is the key you need for the code at the bottom, as the cipher is using the Morbid cipher, and the keyword to use for decoding is Abhorrent. Decoding this text, you get the phrase, Beginnings always zap energy right into emotionless sleep. The phrase starts with the word beginnings, which is the clue to look at the beginning letter for each word. Doing this gets you B-A-Z-E-R-I-E-S, or Baziris, at least I think that's how you pronounce it. This code word is yet another clue, this time for the AM text file, to indicate that the code within the file is using a Baziris cipher. So at the bottom of the text document is the code you need to decipher. The phrase at the top, 3-4 shut the door, 5-6 pick up sticks, is from a children's rhyme, but it is also a key piece of the puzzle for the grid cipher. The Baziris cipher uses two grids. The first grid is filled in as shown in the text file. The second grid in the file is missing 10 letters. It's important to note here that in these grid ciphers, each alphabetical letter is only used once. So, the rhyme at the top, shut the door, means close, which fills in the first five missing letters. Pick up sticks means gather, but remember, even though gather is six letters long, E was already used in close, which means in the grid, gather would be spelled G-A-T-H-R. The 3456 within the rhyme is the numeric key needed for the cipher. So when both grids are filled in using the numeric key, the encoded text reveals the word Mendeleev. Mendeleev is referencing Dmitry Mendeleev, who was a Russian chemist from the 1800s that is most famous for formulating periodic law and coming up with the periodic table. See where we're going with this? In the D text file, at the top of the document, there is a string of numbers. Using the periodic table cipher, which, yes, is a thing, the decoded text reads fusion. This is cluing you in that you need to fuse the words of each riddle together to get a different word. I won't read off these phrases, you can pause if you're curious, but the fused words are common sense, foresight, overcompensate, keyword, onto, straightforward, and underachiever. 
The clue at the bottom here, quote, in this case, the whole is equal to the sum of its parts, means you need to count the number of letters for each of those words. From each of these, what you get is 11, 9, 14, 7, 4, 15, and 13. Plugging these numbers into our trusty old A1Z26 cipher decoder gives us the word kingdom. That is the password to unlock the Omega text file. Opening the Omega text file, you're met with a bunch of gibberish looking text strings and two clues. At the top, it says, play by the rules to reach new beginnings. And at the bottom, it says, the apocalyptic poem it inspired is fantastic. The second clue won't make sense until the end, obviously, but the top clue is letting you know that these text phrases all have rules, rules you have to figure out, and, as you'll find later, that you need the beginning letter of each word answer. As a side note, anyone who is familiar with the Board Ape Yacht Club Cypher Challenge may recognize this specific puzzle. I did take inspiration from them to create a similar rule-jumbling puzzle here. The way the puzzle works is like this. There is ciphertext that is governed by a rule unique to each line. Once you figure out the rule and unjumble the phrase, you have to figure out the answer to that phrase. However, once you have that answer, you then need to reapply the rule to the answer to get a different answer. Anyway, as usual, I won't go through each of these puzzle phrases, and you can pause it if you want to read it, but I will walk through one of them just to show you how it works. So this text here was a fairly easy one comparatively. With some minor trial and error, you figure out that if you break it out by the letter S, you get this phrase. The rule is that the original text had the second letter of each word shifted forward by two, and then the first and second letter were swapped, and an S was added to the end. Again, this was for each word. So to decrypt this, you would take the first letter of each word, since they were swapped, and move it backwards by two then swap the first and second letter back to their original places. Remove the S from the end of each word and you get Northern Polar Region. So the answer to this phrase is Arctic. However, reapplying the rule to the answer, shifting the second letter forward to, swapping the first and second letter, and then adding an S to the end, changes the word to tactics. Easy enough, right? So after doing this for each phrase and answer, and then taking the first letter of the new answer, you get Mount Tambora. Going back to the hint that a, quote, apocalyptic poem was inspired by this, you can determine that the word you need is darkness, as that was the name of the poem written by Lord Byron in 1816, inspired by the Mount Tambora eruption of 1815, which, by the way, is the largest eruption in recorded human history. Anyway, having this phrase we now have all three passcodes we need to enter the final stage. We have Into Eternal Darkness. Opening the web browser, we can finally access the end game. Entering theothershore.gm into the URL field takes us to a black screen, prompting an entry of the three passcodes in order to quote, cross over. Once you have entered all three codes, the ending sequence plays. We'll let it play out, though I will say the text can be slow at times, so I may recommend setting the video to two times speed if you haven't already.
So for this final puzzle, it's pretty straightforward and honestly pretty damn easy all things considered. It's a simple keyboard shift cipher, hinted at by the word quote below, meaning the keys you want are below the letters and numbers listed. Deciphering the text, you get, I found myself within a forest dark, for the straightforward path had been lost. If you got this far in the game, welcome to the Grey Mass. If you got this far in the video, I appreciate the hell out of you and thank you for sticking with me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you participated, hope you enjoyed the game.